the gospel of Luke chapter 3 verse 16 Say amen when you have it. The Bible says, John answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I is coming. Whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire I'm going to read that again he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire somebody say fire I want to speak to you for a few moments on the fiery witness there is a generation right now that has more than ever but any other generation before we are engulfed with our own breakthroughs, our scientific breakthroughs, our economical breakthroughs. Our lives are being filled with everything to make us more comfortable. Never has there been a generation with more education than we have now. Never has there been a, a world and a generation that's had more money than we have now. And yet we cannot fill the endless void that is the depravity of the human soul. There is an epidemic in the world right now. It is a thirst that they cannot quench. No matter how much we feed the flesh, no matter how, how much we fill those desires of the flesh, there's an emptiness inside. I'm watching all the media, from Hollywood to TV shows, from politicians to film stars, from pop idols to act activists. They're telling a generation, express yourself. Be who you want to be. You can be a male. You can be a female. You can be whatever you want to be. We're watching a generation now breaking down the family structures that God designed, that he made. We're watching our culture trying to redefine what God created. Can you not see what hell is seeking to do? To strip creation of its identity. You've got a generation that don't know who they are. This is more than just a generation that are spoiled. This is a darkness that is coming upon this generation. Alcohol, drugs, sexual perversion, scandal, deceit is tolerated. It's just part of the fame and the culture. The addicts are getting younger and the corruption is becoming greater. We are told to accept it. It's the future. It's who we really are. It's today's generation. We have culturally progressed. We have moved forward. Blasphemy is an expression of anger. So all sexuality is good. All religion is good. Worship who and what you want. Religious belief is all the same. From the mosque to the Hindu temple, from the spiritualist to the Scientologist, from the witches to the preachers, it's all the same. So now we got preachers, we got bishops, we got imams, we got every kind of spiritual leader meeting together in secret places trying to arrange a place where we can call it one church. Because there are many ways to God. You better hear this preacher right now. There's only one way to God. There is only one way. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hell wants to break us down so we don't know who we are. 
That's what the devil wants for the church, to lose that identity, to lose the power, to lose the authority. Because when you remove and you water down and you break down the precepts of God, there is no power. You become a powerless, powerless church. The Bible says that at midnight the cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. At midnight the cry was heard. Midnight is the darkest hour. At midnight the cry was heard. I'm telling you right now, you know why I'm declaring the revival's breaking out? Because we are in the darkest hour right now. What you're seeing around the world, this is a, the darkest hour this world has ever known. Paul said it's high time that you wake up. Wake up. Out of your slumber. Because your salvation is nearer now than ever before. So we watch and we look. I don't know whether you've ever heard the cry of God, but there's a cry going out over this generation. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. See, we love, we, we love preachers to tell us how blessed we're going to be. I'm going to shock you tonight, this ain't one of them. This ain't one of those nights. Because God, what God's putting in my heart might shake you to your call. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Let's come in a moment when we least expect it. That God will require of you to stand before him. He's coming with fire in his eyes. He's coming on a white horse. He's coming. Holy one of Israel. The mighty warrior. The king of kings. The king of glory. He's coming. The bridegroom cometh. And the scripture says to us this. Listen to this. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Go out and stand before him. It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their laps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are going out. Another translation says this. Give us your oil. For our flame is dying. It's now just a flicker. It's a dying ember of what once was a burning flame that brought light in the darkness. Gone is the praise. Gone is the glory. Gone is the passion that once burned in the hearts. Give us your oil. Our flame is dying. Why is it that we have to drive miles and miles and miles? Why is it that we have to look across Florida for churches that are burning brightly? You have more churches in this nation on every street corner than anywhere else in the entire world. I pray that Jesus was not being prophetic. Because he was telling us that half the church would have a dying flame when he comes to take his bride. 50% said we don't have enough fire burning right now to stand before him. See, we don't like this kind of preaching anymore. I'm telling you, this is going to be some old school preaching right here. I said it's going to be some old school preaching right here. Because if I don't call sin, sin and righteousness, righteousness, my flame is already dying. 
If I don't say that he is the Holy One of Israel, that he said, be holy, for I am holy, then my flame is already dying. Go out and meet him. Stand before the one whose eyes burn with a flame of fire. A midnight cry. Nowhere in God's word does it teach you to be sleepy. To be a people that have no spiritual revelation of the times we're in. Paul said, and do this, understanding the present time. Don't sleep your way through your life. You better know this. You can name any man or woman that God has used that his fire burned in them so brightly. When I studied many of those revivalists, men and women of God, I've got old film. Pastor, they used to say that when Catherine Coleman came in the building, they knew she'd stepped in the building before they could even see her. Because there was a glory that would come in that room. There was a glory that would precede her. He was a burning flame. He was a fiery witness. He was a flame that could not be quenched. They say when Smith Wigglesworth would bow his knee in prayer, people would start falling out under the power of God. Why? Because he never allowed his flame to die. Burn, oh flame of God, burn with the holy fire. I feel it right now. This is the midnight cry. Legacy. We're not talking about revival because we want to have a tingle down our spine. We're talking about a move of God because without it, our generation is lost. And when we stand before God, God is going to look at you and say, you are responsible for what took place. Oh, you don't believe me? God said every man's work will be tested by fire. And it will test. He will test your works. That which lasts for eternity shall remain. But God said this. If your works are tested by fire, all you will have, if it's not of him, will be ashes. It said you shall be saved, but as though through fire. You're going to heaven. But when you stand before him, you will have nothing to lay at his feet. Oh, we don't preach like that anymore, huh? Oh, we don't preach like that anymore. Because we preached it. Well, if you come down and say a prayer. When we all get to heaven. But the Bible says in Romans that every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And what Christians have forgotten is this. They confuse the great white throne judgment with the judgment seat of God. One is for the sinner, but one, my friend, is for the saint. The Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. Yeah, we're going to stand before him. And the fire that we cry for will be the fire that falls. But this time it won't be a fire to empower. It will be a holy fire to test whether what you built with your life counts for eternity. Did you preach for the fame or did you preach because your heart burned for lost souls? That your heart said without lost souls, I cannot live this life. God, give me souls or take me home. 
church, the enemy doesn't want us to preach this message because he wants you to stay sleepy. Or he wants you to be sleepy because he knows that if a holy fire starts to burn in the church again, that we shall take the gates of hell and the devil will not stop it. I tell you right now, God, raise up the fiery witness. Raise up the fire of God. General William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, whose banner was blood and fire. He said this, I consider that the chief dangers that confront the coming century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, politics without God, and the preaching of heaven without hell. I am determined that that will not apply to this generation because the fire still burns on the altar. There are still men and women that say, Lord, touch me, anoint me, fill me with holy fire. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. Paul said to Timothy, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Another translation says, rekindle the fire that is in you. Find the flame. We have to keep the fire burning. Proverbs 26, 20 says, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Can God be any more obvious than that? Where there's no wood, the fire goes out. God said, I'll give you the fire, but you have to keep it burning. You got to throw some logs on your fire. You say, what are the logs? Well, when you stop praying, you stop throwing the wood on the fire. When you stop getting the word in your spirit, you just stop throwing the logs on the fire. When you come in the house of God and you don't feel like praising, you ought to say, I'm about to throw some logs on my fire because I'm going to be a burning witness. I'm going to be a fiery witness for the glory of my God. If you have a fire burning, give God a praise in this place. One Thessalonians 5.19 says, do not quench the Holy Ghost. Do not quench the Spirit. I wish I could preach this like I want to preach it. I said, I wish I could preach it like I want to preach it. See, the Bible says, for our God... In Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. One thing you got to know about God, he doesn't take half a thing. He doesn't just dip his toe in. He doesn't put his finger on it. No, when he says that is mine, he consumes it. He takes all that he is. That's why God said you got to love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your... I want all of you. I'm a consuming fire. I want all my church, I want the altar, I want the praise, I want the glory, I want the preaching, I want the people, I want the dream, I want the vision, I want it all. Give it all to me, because without me you can do nothing, said Jesus. Without me, without the fire that I give, you are empty handed. What you build will not stand in eternity. Where are you today? You're standing in the presence of a God says that I am all consuming. I am a holy fire, and if you lay on the altar, I'll consume your life and people will not see you they'll see me wherever you go wherever you go I saw something in Isaiah 4 4 
And I'm telling you right now, if you're going to be in some of my meetings in the coming weeks and months, you better get ready for this message. Because Isaiah 4, 4 says that the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of burning. The spirit of burning. Are you getting the idea? That whenever you talk about God, you talk about a fire that cannot be quenched. A holy fire that will not be tamed. A holy fire that consumes. A holy fire that burns. The spirit of burning says, I'll fill you. I'll, I'll empower you. You can't tell me that you got the Holy Ghost if you're not burning. I said, you can't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and your life is not burning. I love the old preacher said, he said, I set myself on fire and the people came to watch me burn. I tell you, pastor, people laugh at me because I'm always sweating. I'm always wet through. But when God anointed me, he stuck me in some kind of oven because whenever I feel the fire of God, my temperature starts to rise. But I know what Jeremiah said when he said your word is like a fire shut up in my bones. It's a living word. It's a burning flame. It's an eternal fire that will never be put out. It is the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry I'm getting passionate. I'm sorry I get, I'm getting passionate. But God said to his people in Zechariah 2, I will be a wall of fire around Jerusalem. God led his people out of the wilderness by a pillar of fire. The Egyptians couldn't even see it. But the people of God saw a fire that was burning so bright that it would lead them. Even in the wilderness, the fire would lead them. Even in the darkest night, the fire would lead them. See? The fire of God in the Old Testament was a sign of his acceptance of the sacrifice. You see, the Bible says in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service when the children of Israel would offer a sacrifice the way that they knew that God accepted the, the sacrifice is that God would pour out his fire from heaven and, and consume the burnt offering it was a holy fire that fell on the altar And yet the Bible says in Leviticus 9 and 10 that there was a two priests, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. They carried the censers, they carried the flame. And they put fire on the torches and added incense. And the Bible says that they offered an unauthorized fire before the Lord. It was contrary to his command. So fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them. And they died before the Lord. God said, that's a strange fire. God said, if you want to bring the fire before me, you have to take it from the table of incense. Nadab and Abihu, they lit their own fire and they brought it before the Lord. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, tell the church today, you can't bring carnality into holiness and expect holiness to receive it. It's strange fire. It's strange fire. Why is it so many of our worship songs sing about us and I and me and we? Oh, you don't want me to go there. Oh, you don't want me to preach what God wants me to preach. It's strange fire. 
Because God says, I won't receive anything that didn't come from me in the first place. God said, unless I gave the fire, you can't bring that fire before me. You can't bring your carnality. You can't bring your humanism and your little ways of thinking that you call God's house a place where we can just life coach. When God says, no, my word is eternal. It is established. It is truth. Why are we trying to bring strange fire and asking God to pour out his spirit upon it? Oh, I I know I'm in dangerous ground, but I just got to preach it. Because we've been telling God what his house needs to look like. We've been telling God what his preaching should sound like. We've been watering down the word because we don't want to offend. And God said, no, that didn't come from my spirit. That's strange fire. You can't bring strange fire into holiness because holiness will... Because holy fire will engulf that carnality. It will burn out the dross. You can't bring strange fire into the holy place. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. See, what they were saying to God is, God, we'll do it our way. We'll bring a fire from a place that we think is good. I'm telling you right now, you touch the holy things of God, God says that's strange fire. You try and bring your philosophy into the holy place, that's strange fire. You try and tell God how he needs to move, what he needs to do, and when he needs to do it, that's strange fire. Because now we're telling God what's holy and what's not holy. We're trying to tell God that his word was for those times that God didn't really mean be holy. No, 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 that was for that time. No, that when God said that man shall leave his mother and his father and be cleaved to his wife. No, no, no. What God really meant was that he could be cleaved to another man or another woman. Or, no, 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 no. That's strange fire. You can't bring that into the holy place. I'm telling you right now because God told me something. He said when they brought carnality into the holy place, I answered by fire. This was a fire fight and I was not going to lose. When you bring strange fire God says to this generation I'm about to send the fire that will consume it I'm about to send a move of God that will over somebody shout fire see that which is born of flesh is flesh But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You can't come before God with a fire that says, God, I want you to do this just so that you can show the people that God's with you. God, I want your fire because I want a big ministry. I want to be known. I want this many followers. I want to be received well. That's strange fire. See, God released the fire in that moment. You've heard the saying, fight fire with fire. I said, God, how is that possible? How can you fight fire with fire? You see, if you speak to farmers, especially in Australia, they'll tell you when a brush fire breaks out, they build a wall of fire. Because they know that that wall of fire will eventually stop the fire burning. That wall of fire will stop the strange fire from taking what it's not supposed to take. You see, that's why I'm here to tell you, there's been some strange fire. There's been some watering down of the word of God. There's been some things that God has looked at and said, no, this can't come into a holy place. But I'm telling you, God is sending a fire, a wall of fire that will consume it that will remove the drug 
cross because God said the church is mine and mine alone see we we're in a place where a strange fire is killing our churches it's killing our preachers it's a strange fire that's destroying our effectiveness because now we got to be modern we got to look like the world so now we're really letting the world shape what looks like holy and we wonder why when the world tells you what's holy and what's not holy and we bow down to it the God says no that's strange fire I can't pour out my spirit in this place in your life in your family come out and be separate don't bow down to what culture says is right and wrong it's time to stand with the holy fire to never be ashamed that's the cry of God's heart see the Bible says this that John was a burning and shining lamp he was a burning flame God's about to cause a fire to burn in your heart that cannot be quenched In the Gospel of Luke, the disciples said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while we talked, while he talked with us by the way and while he opened the scriptures to us? When God anoints you and baptizes you with fire, his word will become like a flame on the inside of you. It will burn so brightly that no devil in hell will be able to stop you. So why is it that we can't pray? Why is it that we can't read our word but once a week? Why is it that we'd rather post on social media than get before God and say, God, I want to enter into that holy place. Let your holy fire burn in me. Why is it that we've lost that power? Why is it that God is no longer doing miracles in our midst? Where are the fiery witnesses? Hebrews 1 7 says, He will make his ministers a flame of fire. See, God is birthing this within me right now. People are about to be launched in this meeting tonight. God is about to move you like he's never moved you before. He's about to light a fire because we can't be silent anymore. No, 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 listen to me. We got to be willing to pay a price because you love the anointing and you love the power of God and the glory of God's going to move in this place tonight. The fire of God's going to fall. But let me tell you right now, the fire comes because God says, are you willing to pay the price? Let your fire burn. Take me from a place. Take me from a place where I stand and say, God, I need you into a place where I say, Lord, I'm ready to do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. See, some of you have come to Legacy. You've not come to a conference. You've come to a holy bonfire. You've come to a fire and that fire is going to burn. It's burning brightly right now and God is looking to and fro across this auditorium for those who will yield to the Holy Ghost. That they will say no matter how old I am, no matter how young I am, Lord, let your fire burn in me. Burn that eternal flame. People say I want to see miracles. Some people come to me and say, I, 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 want, I want an evangelistic ministry. I want to say to them, are you ready to burn? Are you ready to burn? 
Are you ready to so yield to God that he is the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning and he's the last thing you think of when you go to bed? Are you ready to die to yourself? Are you ready to lay down all your own ambitions? Are you ready to lay down your mindsets and say, God, I don't want strange fire. I want the fire of the Holy Ghost. God, make me a fiery witness. You are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood. Let the keyboard player come. Are you ready to burn for him? See, I don't know about you, but I don't want strange fire. I want a move of God that will shake the United States of America. <laughs> you know, I've seen God do some great things. I think I told you the story one Wednesday night. Recently, I saw a miracle that just blew my mind. I came in from the service, I bowed before the Lord, and I felt His glory, and I said, God, that was such an incredible miracle. I mean, this young boy just, crippled spine spent over like this God just I, just straightens the boy up I mean just like that just straightens him up and I said God that's an incredible miracle and I felt the Holy Ghost whisper to me son that ain't nothing you ain't seen nothing yet it was like God was saying to me, son, if you just come a little closer. Because I tell you right now from the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and said, this is that, that's when the devil knew he was in real trouble. That's when he knew, I can't stop this. This ain't ever going to be stopped. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's a holy fire that burns in the heart of every believer. It's the fiery witness. I feel the fire of God. I'm, I'm literally dripping wet here. I'm, I'm spraying water right now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The devil put them in a strange fire. Pastor said it last night. I couldn't believe it. I was going to preach on it tonight, so I missed it out because Pastor preached it better than me. It was a strange fire that God said, no, 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 no. That strange fire can't consume the fire that I've put on you. See, when they looked and they saw someone in the fire, the burning witness, I'm telling you right now, whatever the devil's trying to throw against your life, whatever attack, there's a fire in you that will consume every strange fire the devil tries to send against you. To lay hands upon the sick, to cast out devils, to preach the uncompromising message of the gospel. Raise up your fiery witnesses in this place, Lord. <sighs> Lift your voice all over this place. Ask the Lord to touch you right now. Ask the Lord to fill you right now. I don't hear you.
Lift up your voice for a few more moments. Lift it up. Lift up your voice. You're standing before a holy God. His eyes burn with love for you. But he said, I demand your all. I demand everything that you are. Because I don't want to stand before God with this ministry and say, Lord, it was tested by fire and all I have is ashes. My brother, my sister, does your life count for eternity? Is what you're doing right now, is what you're investing your life for? way in the balance of eternity check your heart and say Lord is the flame burning brightly in my life because tonight we're coming to the altar before God and saying, God, burn out the dross, make us bold. Church, can I tell you, I have the privilege of going around the world. I have preached to men and women. Their sons went out to preach and they never came home. They were killed for the gospel. Gospels, many Bibles on our shelves. We have every translation, but we don't read them. And God is saying, Who, who will lay at the altar? Who will bring themselves and yield their lives that I can burn in them a holy fire? Come right now. Wherever you are, we're going to lift up our voice. God is about to move across this place. He's about to move in a mighty way. Lift up your voice all over this auditorium. Say, Lord, send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire.
to you right now. I can see miracles all over this building. Miracles are happening right now if you need a healing. But God, the Spirit keeps telling me, don't, don't just focus on the miracles. Focus on the fire. Focus on the fire. Focus on the fire. Focus on the altar right now. I'm telling you, there's holy fire starting to fall. Bring this mama, bring this mama, that's holy fire. A growth, a growth in the liver, a growth in the liver on the left side, a growth in your liver on the left side here. Where's that woman? God is healing you right now. You're going to feel heat go through your side. A growth in the liver, some kind of cyst on the liver, the liver, the liver. Bring it to me. Let it go. asking God for in your liver close your eyes lift your hands
want to thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Shake the Nation's ministries and our YouTube channel, why don't you click the subscribe button? Also, if you want notifications of our brand new videos, why don't you click the bell? There's so much more in Shake the Nation's ministries that you can get involved in. Why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more? To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.